During mitosis, the spindle assembly checkpoint prevents anaphase onset by keeping the ubiquitin ligase APC inactive until all chromosomes are correctly attached to the metaphase spindle. Once the chromosomes are properly aligned, the APC is activated to target cyclin B and other substrates for degradation, allowing cells to separate their chromosomes and exit mitosis. The spindle checkpoint also regulates mammalian oocytes undergoing meiosis, though it appears to be a little less stringent than it is in mitotic cells. But whether the checkpoint exists in the oocytes of non-mammalian vertebrates, such as the frog Xenopus levis, is unclear, as John A. Liu from the Ottawa Hospital Research Institute in Canada explains. It's been known for quite some time that the um, APC activations and the cyclin B degradations occur before a metaphase spindle it's a sample during the frog oocyte maturation. So that sort of suggests that the APC activation and cyclin B degradation is not controlled by the spindle. Whether or not frog oocytes possess a spindle assembly checkpoint has never been tested directly, however. The simplest experiment is to destroy the microtubule, then look at chromosomes, see if they still undergo bivalent to dire transitions. If they have a spindle checkpoint, they will rest in metaphase 1, which means they will have bivalent chromosomes. If they don't, then you'll find dire chromosomes. But the problem is nobody is able to do chromosome spread of frog oocyte because it's so large. Liu and colleagues, led by Hua Xiao and Rei Zhen Li, therefore developed a way to karyotype the chromosomes of frog oocytes, excising small regions of the cell containing the meiotic spindle and then performing chromosome spreads. At defined time points after the onset of meiosis, the chromosomes of control oocytes progress from bivalent pairs of homologous chromosomes in metaphase 1 to monovalent dyads of sister chromatids in metaphase 2, where the eggs arrest until a fertilization signal prompts them to complete the second meiotic division. In the presence of the microtubule depolymerizing drug nicotazole, meiotic frog chromosomes underwent this bivalent to dyad transition without any delay suggesting that frog oocytes lack the spindle checkpoint and can progress to metaphase 2 in the absence of a spindle. The problem is, in frog oocytes, you can remove no cortisol, but microtubule will not reassemble. This microtubule poison is reversible in any other cell, but for some reason, it's not reversible in frog oocytes. So we can't see whether or not these oocytes have actually reached a physiological metaphase 2 state because the spindle doesn't reassemble. Xiaotal therefore treated oocytes with colsimid, a microtubule depolymerizing drug that is sensitive to ultraviolet light. Just like nicotazole, colsimid failed to delay the chromosome's bivalent to dyad transition, despite its destruction of the first meiotic spindle. Sure enough, after we exposed the colsimid treated oocyte to UV, they do make a bipolar spindle but then they don't do anything. They're arrested in metaphase indefinitely until we puncture them with a sharp needle, which mimic fertilization. When we do that, we see exactly what will happen in a normal metaphase 2 oocyte. That is, they initiate anaphase 2 and emit a polar body. Frog oocytes can therefore separate homologous chromosome pairs and progress to metaphase 2 in the absence of spindle microtubules strongly suggesting that these cells lack the spindle assembly checkpoint. We want to make sure because this is provocative. So another characteristic of spindle assembly checkpoint is that it responds to monopolar spindle because it lacks the interpolar chromosome tension. So that will also cause metaphase with arrest. So if frog that don't have a spindle assembly checkpoint, then if we generate monopolar spindle, they should undergo so-called monopolar anaphase. Xiao et al. therefore induced monopolar spindles in frog oocytes by either expressing a dominant negative version of the Aurora B kinase or by treating cells with the egg 5 kinesin inhibitor SDLC. They then followed the progress of meiosis by video microscopy. You can 
clearly see at the time of anaphase, the chromosome is undergoing pole movement. It sort of moves towards the center of the spindle. And also by karyotyping the oci, we can also see that after the anaphase transitions, the monopolar oci only have thyroid chromosome. Moreover, when monopolar eggs were prick activated to mimic their fertilization, they successfully transitioned from metaphase 2 to anaphase 2 suggesting that the spindle assembly checkpoint doesn't function in either the first or second meiotic division of frog oocytes. So I think we clearly demonstrate that anaphase initiation is not controlled by the spindle assembly checkpoint in frog oocyte. Then the question is, what control in metaphase to anaphase transition during oocyte maturation that's not influenced by the spindle? That is the key question that we are trying to address right now. In the meantime, you can learn more about the lack of a spindle assembly checkpoint in Xenopus oocytes in the paper by Xiao et al, published in the April 15, 2013 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.